Hey guys, today's video is about period 3. Uh, we are studying period 3 because uh, it really exemplifies all the period properties that we have in the periodic table. We've already discussed group 2 and groups, uh, we will be discussing group 17 also in relation to the properties that the atoms have or elements have down group 2 and group 17. But here we're studying period 3 and how the elements the, across period 3 differ in their physical properties of atomic radius, ionic radius, first ionization energy melting points and how some of the elements react with water oxygen chlorine to form oxides and chlorides and with water they will react to form alkalis and acids and how the oxides react with water and how the chlorides react with water that's what we have to study today now uh, we'll be doing and discussing today i won't be discussing uh, actually the first three atomic radius trends across period ionic radius trends across periods and first ionization energy trends across periods and the reason for that is that we've done this before in periodic trends. So I'm going to actually skip those and start off with melting points. For those of you who are, looking, who are watching this video and want to study those three trends, please watch my periodic trends videos. All right. So continuing from this, we'll start with melting points of period three. And to understand the melting points of period three elements, we've got to check out the structures. All right. So here I'm bringing up a table for period three elements. Uh, period 3 are basically sodium, alum, magnesium, aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine and argon. That's group 1, group 2, group 3 or 13, uh, 4 or 14, 5 or 15, 6 or 16, 7, 17 and 18. Their properties are determined by their structure. The first three are metals. So the structure is a metallic lattice. We just did this in bonding. SI is a macromolecular structure just like the shape of diamond. And these four are found as simple covalent molecules, monoatomic molecular structure and diatomic molecular structure and polyatomic. Now phosphorus is P4 at room temperature and sulfur is S8 at room temperature. That's their uh, molecules that make up the structure. Silicon's macromolecule is made of silicon atoms and sodium, magnesium, aluminum, metallic lattice is made up of these cations surrounded by the delocalized electrons. So the melting points will be based on the fact that they are metals, macromolecule, and simple molecular structure. Metals tend to have high except for sodium. It's pretty it's lower than compared to other metals. Macromolecules are high. Simple molecules have low because they are really held by weak van der Waals forces. The metals have high conductivity. Silicon is a semiconductor, so we call it moderate or medium. And these guys are low or nil electrical conductivity. But before we do that, let me show you these guys. Actually, we've never seen, at least, uh, we've never seen P4 in the syllabus. So this is the first time we get to view it. Now, we've already seen the structure of metals. We saw this earlier in the structure of silicon in uh, uh, the macromolecular section of bonding structures. This is P4. This is basically four phosphorus atoms, each signal bonded to three others. This is P4. This is also a simple molecular structure, but this is P4. So it'll have more electrons and it'll have stronger van der Waals. This crown-like structure is S8. Kind of looks like a Batmanish kind of thing. Crown structure, S8. Each sulfur is making two bonds, two single bonds with two other sulfur atoms. And they end up making an S8 molecule. These are covalent bonds, all of them. Now, why does this have a very high melting point? Because all the covalent bonds have to be broken. And these guys have lower because the covalent bonds don't have to be broken. Their van der Waals forces have to be broken. But we have to study their variation also. So I'm going to show you graph because you'll have to sometimes sketch this graph also yourselves. And this is the graph of melting points of period 3. Now here you see uh, the melting points rise from group 1 to group 3 because they're metals. Silicon is the highest, it's a macromolecule. And these four guys are simple molecular structures and they have the lowest of melting points. Now phosphorus and sulfur are in the same range as sodium so we call this low. These are low melting points, all right? Now, so why are these melting points increasing? And the reason why the melting points are increasing from going from sodium to magnesium to aluminum is because 
the cations are increasing in their charge the outermost electrons that are delocalized are increasing so there's greater attraction from the cations to the all the electrons that are delocalized so the strength of metallic bonding increases this guy is the highest because it's a macromolecular structure so these guys are metals and a metallic lattice silicon is a macromolecular structure and to melt it you have to break all the covalent bonds and that's why its melting point is the highest and these guys why does the melting point vary this way this is something that you'll have to be able to explain now amongst these four they are all by the way simple covalent molecules now what do i have let me zoom in a little bit more so you guys can see this now phosphorus has uh, what you may call it uh, the molecular molecule of phosphorus p4 sulfur is s8 chlorine is cl2 and argon is just monatomic mono argon and if you were to count their electrons phosphorus p4 would have four times 16 electrons sorry 15 electrons that's about 60 electrons sulfur has h times 16 that's a lot of electrons a whole 128 cl2 has twice 17 that's 34 and argon only has 18 electrons so amongst these four argon has the least number of electrons so it has the weakest van der Waals, then chlorine, then P4, and then S8. So the lowest, the highest, or the highest to the lowest is S8, which is greater than P4, which is then greater than Cl2, which is then greater than argon. They're melting points. And that's because the most electrons, so strongest van der Waals, most, uh, most electrons, strongest van der Waals, then fewer electrons, then fewer, and then fewer. So the van der Waals forces are decreasing in this order. That's why S8 has a highest melting point amongst these four these all these four are by the way simple molecular structures and in this case in simple covalent molecules or simple molecular structures what matters is the strength of the intermolecular forces and that's the highest for sulfur then p4 then cl2 then argon and this graph you should be able to sketch for the exam all right so I'm zooming out here this is the graph that you have to see and sketch for in the exam all right, and you have to be able to make this hiccups going up and down and then down. The y-axis values don't matter, just the sketch matters. Up, up, highest for macro, then the four others in the simple covalent molecular structures, the fact that P4, say, S8, it goes up, then down, then down even for argon. Which is why this is the table, again, the same table, but now with actual melting points. You see the increasing? Because the strength of van der Waals, oh, sorry, strength of metallic bonding increases, especially between group one and group two, massive increase. This is very high because of the macromolecule, and then increases, then decreases, and then even more, so decrease. So highest is S8, then P4, and notice that S8 is a simple covalent molecule held by van der Waals forces, but those van der Waals are stronger than the metallic bonding of of sodium. So at times there are some exceptions, not exceptions. We know this is low because there aren't too many electrons are holding the lattice together. Now, electrical conductivity was high for the metals. Silicon, macromole uh, silicon is a, what do you call a micro, uh, semiconductor, so it's moderate considered. And these guys are low to null because they have no delocalized electrons or no electrons or ions to move around. All right? Okay, next up. So this is a structure and melting points of the elements of period 3. Now we'll go on to the reactions of the elements of period 3. The reactions will be discussed with the elements with the oxygen, chlorine and water. Okay, so now we'll be discussing how the elements of period 3 react with oxygen in air. Now all elements of period 3 react with oxygen to make oxides, except for argon obviously. We won't be studying for chlorine, we'll be studying sodium, alum, magnesium, aluminum, silicon, phosphorus and sulfur because that's what the syllabus tells us to study. Now, when they do form their oxides, the oxygen being extremely electronegative brings out the maximum oxidation state that we get from these guys. Sodium's maximum state is plus 1, magnesium is plus 2, aluminum is plus 3, silicon is plus 4. Phosphorus has two oxidation states, plus 3 and plus 5. But it's a plus five they'll be more interested in. That's the one we'll be quoting in many of the questions and reactions, all right? Sulfur is the only one where by burning in oxygen, it doesn't form the maximum oxidation state. It forms SO2 and not SO3. So you'll see all the reactions. Uh, 
here I want to highlight a couple of things that P4010 and P4006 are actually what we call dimers. P4006 is formed when you have actually two P203 molecules reacting with each other to make P406. This is the lower oxidation state of phosphorus. And the higher one, plus 5, is actually when two P2O5s combine to make P4O10s. Now, they do that to become more stable, and these are the dimers formed. And why are they called dimers? Because two of these were used to make one of this. Two of these were used to make one of this. But they are found as dimers P406 and P4010. In P406, its oxidation state is plus 3, and P4, sorry. In P406, the oxidation state is plus 3. And in P4010, the oxidation state is plus 5. Let's just see how we can calculate one in any of them. Let's say we're doing it for P406. In P406, there's four phosphoruses, let's say we don't know of, but each oxygen is minus 2. And for, for a compound, the net oxidation state is 0. So if I do about this math, is 4x minus 20 is 0, and x comes out to plus 5. That's how you can find the oxidation state. Sulfur dioxide, sulfur trioxide, these already are plus 4 and plus 6. This guy, by the way, if you, if you can remember to pair these guys up with their anions, it'll come in handy later. Like... Sulfur trioxide ka anion, the accompanying anion for sulfur trioxide is sulfate ion. And for sulfur dioxide is the sulfide ion. And why am I pairing them in? Because sulfide ion means sulfur is plus 4 just like SO2. And in sulfate anion, sulfur is plus 6 just like in SO3. And for phosphorus, the anion it pairs up with is the phosphate anion. PO4, 3 minus. It's this ion that phosphorus has the plus 5 oxidation state. Why am I pairing up with them right now? Because right after this, we will study their oxides reaction with water. So when these oxides react with water, they make their anion K acids. Like SO3 in water makes H2SO4, SO2, SO, SO2 in water makes H2SO3, and P4O10 in water makes H3PO4. And so it'll be nice to keep remembering this because then it becomes easy to both show the oxides reaction with water and to show how the oxides react as a particular let's say these guys are ox ex uh, acidic oxides so you'll be reacting them with, the, with NaOH to show their salts and these guys are basic oxides so we'll be studying that also in the next couple of slides now how do they burn in oxygen now when they burn in oxygen just scrolling down let's start with the first one first one is sodium now sodium is a silver gray solid reacts with oxygen gas to form sodium oxide Na2O which is by the way white in color now this reaction has a brilliant yellow flame and that's an observation that you'll have to remember a brilliant yellow colored flame okay and is the gray metal becomes a white solid as long as you I mean you, you, you can just leave it in there and it'll do this but if you were to burn it you would see the yellow flame also uh, because the reaction is quite vigorous same with magnesium if magnesium is burned in air magnesium solid and this is something that we've done in group 2 also magnesium is burned in air sorry that's 2Na magnesium is burned in air to form MgO now that's again a white solid from a silver gray metal but this time the flame is a brilliant white flame bright white flame and that's what magnesium does when it burns in oxygen and air so both of these metals burn silver gray metals make to burn in uh, air to make white solids but their flame colors are different and you should learn them sodium burns in a, burns in a yellow bright yellow flame bright brilliant yellow and what uh, magnesium burns in a bright brilliant white flame Magne aluminum now the problem with aluminum is that it does uh, if you take in this in the foil form it doesn't react much well because in the foil form it forms a protective layer of oxide but if you take powdered aluminum it will react to make Al2O3 now that would be again a white solid from grey metal it will make a white solid this also burns with a bright white flame brilliant or bright white flame both magnesium and aluminum brilliant bright white flame bright brilliant same thing okay now Going on to the non-metal, the non-metal is silicon. Now silicon is a macromolecular structure, so you would expect it to burn really slow because macromolecules don't dissolve in water, they don't react well, so this silicon does that. Silicon reacts really slowly with oxygen to form SiO2. 
and uh, even that's a macromolecule. So you really don't see much happening. And something that reacts not so, uh, reacts very slowly, you're not really going to see any flame colors because it's reacting very slowly. Not enough energy given out. The rest of the reactions, actually, by the way, the first three that I showed you were exothermic. These are all exothermic reactions. Bright yellow, bright white, bright white. Sodium, bright yellow flame. Magnesium, bright white flame. Aluminum, bright white flame. All silver gray metals make white solids. All exothermic. Here, you have in silicon, you have a non-metal macromolecular structure, burns really slowly in oxygen to also make a macromolecular SiO2 structure. Now, the other non-metals, the ones that actually have a reaction. The first one, phosphorus. Phosphorus is found as P4 solid at room temperature and it burns in oxygen to form the higher oxidation state P4O10 solid. Mm, this is a white solid also. And the flame in this case is a mixture, of, I mean, sometimes yellow, sometimes white. So you see white or yellow flames in this case. All right. Now, sulfur. Sulfur is the only guy that doesn't produce uh, the highest oxidation state. Now, here the funny thing is for the exam, you can write, I mean, it, it really is S8, and I like to write 18 S8 plus O2 to balance it out to make SO2. Nice clean equation, 18 S8. But you can also just write, sulfur if you want you know because sulfur solid is what they mean when they say so they mean 18s8 when they write sulfur solid so either or is fine i prefer 18s8 because that's just being absolutely correct all right so you got that going here now in this case solid yellow solid becomes a gas yellow solid becomes a gas all right so that's the change that you'd see now sulfur does burn in a blue flame so the flame color in this case is blue, blue, blue. So the flame color in this case is blue. You have to learn the flame colors, guys. You do. So if I were to summarize the flame colors so far, amongst the elements that we saw, we saw sodium, magnesium, aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, and sulfur. They burn to make Na2O. Mg makes MgO. Al makes Al2O3. SI makes SiO2, Phosphorus makes P4O10, and Sulfur makes SO2, not SO3. Now what are the colors? Okay, now let me do the arrows first. So this color, here is, the flame is, let's, let's actually make some space for that. So let's say, flame. So for sodium, the flame color is yellow. For magnesium, it's white, bright white. Aluminum is bright white, phosphorus is a mix of yellow and white, and sulfur is blue. So these are flame colors that you have to learn, please. Chlorine is considered not to react with oxygen, that's why we don't have it. It does form an oxide, but for now we don't, it doesn't react. And argon, being a noble gas, doesn't react. So these are the six oxides you study, their formation when the elements burn in air, and their flame colors. That's what you got to remember, alright? So... Moving on from there, we got to also talk about these elements reacting with chlorine. Now, so the same way they react with oxygen, they react with chlorine. So let's talk about that. Now, we'll be studying the reaction of sodium all the way to phosphorus to make the chlorides. Sodium, magnesium, aluminum, phosph uh, silicon, phosphorus. That's it. And when they react to make the chlorides, they make, in this case, NaCl, in Mg's case, MgCl2. Aluminum's case AlCl3, silicon makes the macromolecule makes the liquid SiCl4, and phosphorus makes PCl5. Now, how do they react? Well, simply speaking, you burn them in a mixture of the gas and in, in a container with the gas. Now, these three guys react vigorously, violently, because they're metals and they make salts. Silicon reacts very slowly because it's a macromolecule. And even phosphorus reacts slowly to make PCl5. Um, and then they'll ask you to write the equations. So sodium solid plus half Cl2 gas would produce NaCl solid. You'd say green gas reacts with gray metal to form a white solid. It's a vigorous reaction for sure. Then magnesium and aluminum also react vigorously. Magnesium solid 
plus Cl2 gas makes another white solid MgCl2. Now they're all white solids, they the chlorides and oxides because they're not transition elements and so they don't make colored compounds. So in the react they make white solids. Now AlCl3 is also a white solid. Yes, it is covalently bonded and it will on heating dimerize to make Al2Cl6 dative bonding but in the basic solid state it's considered to be AlCl3 and we've got to balance that out so we've got to put 3 here, 3 here and 2 here. Both of these, all three of them react vigorously and they make white solids. Silicon reacts very slowly with chlorine and the reason for that is it is a what you call it a macromolecule. So Si macromolecule plus oxygen gas makes SiCl4. Now SiCl4 is a liquid at room temperature guys, liquid and obviously a colorless liquid. Phosphorus reacts with the P4 reacts with Cl2 gas to make PCl5 liquid and this is also a slow reaction you need 4 PCl5s from 4 P's and therefore 5 to the 10, 5, 20, 10 Cl2s that would be the full balanced reaction alright in addition to forming the oxides and chlorides we will talk about the properties of period 3 oxides and chlorides. So after having made the oxides and chlorides, let's talk about how the oxides react. Okay, so looking at period 3 oxides, we get sodium oxide, magnesium oxide, Al2O3, SiO2, P4O6 and P4O10. We already discussed them, there's dimers and SO2, SO3. Their oxidation states were plus 1, plus 2, plus 3 for the metals, plus 4 for SiO2. P4O6 has phosphorus in plus 3 state, P4O10 has plus 5 state, SO2 it's plus 4, SO3 is plus 6. Here I will talk about their structures now. The first three are giant ionic lattices, therefore the melting points are going to be high and generally because they're metal oxides, they're basic except for lumen being amphoteric. And we know that sodium oxide is highly soluble, so it's alkaline, magnesium oxide is not very soluble, so therefore it's slightly alkaline only. Al2O3 and SiO2 are considered to be insoluble. SiO2, why? Because Si2 is a macromolecule. The last two elements, the four molecules they make, they're all simple covalent. Because they're simple covalent, they're held by weak van der Waals forces. And they dissolve in water because they're acidic, so they make acidic solutions in water. Now, we will be discussing the reactions with water really. And to prove that they are acids or alkalis, they are basic nature and not acidic nature. So how do I prove something is basic? React with an acid. How do I prove something is amphoteric? To show that it reacts with acids and alkalis. How do I show something is acidic? React it with alkalis. And, but first, we will try dissolving them in water to see the reactions. We will see here, here and here. So first let's see that. Now the easiest one is to talk about sodium oxide. Because we know sodium oxide as a solid plus water makes the most popular alkali sodium hydroxide. It will make two moles of that. So what you will see is a white solid readily dissolves exothermically to make a very 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 alkaline solution. So much so that the pHA would be near 14. Okay. pHA actually would be yeah near 14. So we should write that actually. I forgot to add that as a table. So pH would be near 14. Magnesium will be near about 11, 10 you know. And these guys are acidic, so they are pretty strong to somewhere in the range of 1 to 3, you know, depending on how weak the acid might be. These are considered to be weak acids. H2SO4 is a strong acid, but the rest of them are weak. So, that's NaOH. MgO, when it does dissolve only slightly, it makes magnesium hydroxide. So, MgO, the small amount that does dissolve, it makes magnesium hydroxide. MgO plus H2O liquid makes MgOH twice aqueous. Small amount, alright? Al2O3 in water, it's insoluble, so it won't be dissolving in water. While I'm at it, I must also do the reactions of sodium and magnesium with water. I forgot to do them earlier. These two as elements, their reactions with water are also in the syllabus. And they're very similar to their oxides reaction with water because their products are the same. When sodium reacts with water, it makes 
sodium hydroxide. The reaction is very vigorous and you go from being a silvery metal to making a very alkaline solution. Now, magnesium is reacting with cold water. We had seen this was in group 2 theory and it makes a slightly soluble magnesium hydroxide. The first few, I guess, uh, amounts will make an aqua solution and as you create more magnesium hydroxide, it won't dissolve and it will form the solid. But uh, if you were to do the reaction with steam, if you remember, remember steam, group 2 theory. If you do steam, then you don't make the hydroxide, you make the oxide. Now I'm doing this here just to remind you guys that that's a reaction in group 2 theory also. So, so sodium and magnesium oxide dissolve in water to make the hydroxides. Very aqueous, very alkaline in NaOH's case. Not so alkaline in magnesium, hydro magnesium hydroxide's case because magnesium hydroxide is very slightly soluble. And sodium's metal, as a metal, dissolves in water to also make a NaOH. Magnesium dissolves in cold water very slowly to make the hydroxide. And that is only sol slightly soluble. And with steam, it reacts more vigorously to make the oxide. And uh, yeah. In magnesium's case, I didn't write the uh, the acids, the gas. Both of oh sorry, all these these three produce hydrogen gas too. I forgot to mention that two waters, hydrogen gas, two waters, and hydrogen gas here. I'm sorry, guys. So let me repeat: the three, the two metals react with water to make hydroxides and hydrogen gas. While the magnesium uh, with steam also gives hydrogen gas but makes the oxide. Obviously, aluminum doesn't react with water, it doesn't dissolve in water, its oxide also is insoluble in water. Now, to prove that these guys are bases, magnesium oxide and sodium oxide, what do we do? We dissolve them in, in acids. So, how do I prove that NaOH, okay, let's write that equation again, sodium oxide plus water makes NaOH and that's an alkali. But how, that's not the reaction you should use to prove that sodium hydroxide is basic or alkaline. What you do is you add sodium oxide as a base because by definition a basic oxide is one that reacts with acids to form salts and water. So that's what we write. By definition an as and a base is one that reacts with an acid to make salt and water. Sodium oxide is the base. It reacts with Two moles of HCl and that is your acid to make two moles of NaCl because that's your salt and one mole of water. So a base plus acid makes salt and water. Alright? That's how you prove the reaction where sodium oxide is a as basic oxide. Now the same for magnesium, even though magnesium hardly dissolves in water, because it's MgO plus water makes it's slightly soluble only so its alkali is very weak very weak hardly soluble but but to prove that it's a base it does react completely with acids so magnesium oxide plus let's say hcl to hcl makes mgcl2 that's your salt and one mole of water so here mgo is acting as a base, reacts with an acid to make salt and water. Now these reactions you have to learn, but because I'm grouping them together, I'm hoping they're easy to learn, which is the fact that the two oxides of period uh, group one and two, both react with acids of uh, water to make uh, hydroxides and both react with acids to make salt and water. The more alkaline one is sodium hydroxide because it dissolves more and magnesium dissolves less. Aluminum doesn't dissolve in water. Aluminum, aluminum's oxide, but it is amphoteric. What that means is that it will dissolve in acids and alkalis. So let's scroll down to talk about aluminum. Now the reason why aluminum is unreactive is because of its protective aluminum oxide layer. Al2O3 is a protective non-porous oxide layer, which is why Al2O3 doesn't dissolve in water, which is why even aluminum doesn't dissolve in water and they are insoluble in water the whole Al2O3 now but it does react with acids or alkalis how because Al2O3 is both amphoteric so it means it both reacts with acids and alkalis so first of all its reaction as a base is easy because all metal oxides reacts with acid react with acids to make salt 
एंड वाटर सो हेयर अ मेटल ऑक्साइड तो है ही है बट बिकॉज ऑफ दैट इट्स एम्फोटरिक सो द मेटल ऑक्साइड प्लस एसिड मेक्स लेट्स बैलेंस टू सिक्स एंड देर फॉर आई नीड थ्री वाटर्स राइट या थ्री वाटर्स इट डजन हैव टू बी दच सी एल इट इज द सेम थिंग विद एच टू एस फोर जस्ट हैव टू बैलेंस इट डिफरेंटली बट अल्यूमिनियम ऑक्साइड एम्फोटरिक है सो विल रिएक्ट विद एसिड्स टू फॉर्म सॉल्ट एंड वाटर दैट रिएक्शन इज ईजी दैट्स दैट्स द वन इज एक्टिंग एज ए बेस एज अ बेस एल्यूमिनियम ऑक्साइड रिएक्ट विद एन एसिड टू मेक सॉल्ट एंड वाटर दैट्स द मोर कॉमन वन बिकॉज आई मीन इज द सेम वे एज एन एच सॉरी एन ए टू ओ एन एम जी ओ रिएक्ट द रिएक्ट विद एच सी एल टू मेक सॉल्ट एंड वाटर हाउ दिस मेटल इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम एन एम जी एन एन ए इज दैट इट इज वट यू कॉल इट एम्फोटरिक सो इट विल रिएक्ट विद एल्कलीज ऑल्सो you need to have excess alkali and heat if possible so that make the reaction easier and better so al2o3 has to is, uh, solid reacts with and this is something that you have to learn guys to any which there are few equations you can use this one they are similar but it reacts with two moles of any which and three moles of water together to make to make a complex and that complex is of aluminate naaloh4 minus because the key here is that it's the aloh4 uh, an ion it's forming in excess anyh in water and this an ion and this compound actually is aqueous so aqueous so it goes from being solid with anyh to dissolve dissolving in water anyh and making an aqueous solution you might remember aluminum as a cation makes a white ppd with anyh and that white ppd is the aluminum hydroxide similar to aluminum oxide and then if you add excess any which the white ppd dissolves and the reason why it dissolves is it makes this complex ion that's why any anyway, aluminum can act as a both what you call it a uh, base and in this case it is neutralizing an alkali so it's acting as an acid an acid plus alkali in make in making in this case not salt and water but it is neutralizing an alkali so al2o3 can act as a base with hcl and act as an acid with nh now this reaction you have to learn yeah this chapter is actually about learning a few reactions you have to road learn them there's no way about it i'm trying to make them as intuitive as possible like the metal oxides plus acid forms salt and water but this metal oxide is also not just a base but an acid because it's amphoteric so al2o3 is amphoteric and so i'll keep repeating it i'm i might sound like a broken record right now but i'm repeating and repeating and repeating because it should stick in your head that let me recap so far what we've done is i'll just zoom out just to make you see what we've done so far the group 1 uh, oxides react with water to make an alkali and their oxides react with acids to make salt group 2 oxide reacts with water very slowly to make an alkali highly insoluble slightly soluble very very less alkaline slightly alkaline but reacts with acids to make salt and water al2o3 is amphoteric but insoluble in, in water so it doesn't dissolve in water what it does do is it reacts with acids to make salt and water and it reacts with alkali to also make a complex ion salt of the aluminate okay so those are the metal oxides reactions i did separate them from the non metal oxides the phosphorus oxide and sulfur dioxide and sulfur trioxide because those react differently from these guys these guys are uh, basic oxides and amphoteric but the amphoteric was a metal oxide so i clumped it here moving on i want to talk about uh, the oxides of phosphorus but before we mention phosphorus i forgot we got to talk about silicon now silicon dioxide that is the oxide of silicon is a macromolecule because it's a macromolecule it is generally unreactive doesn't dissolve in water so you won't see it is it dissolving in water even though by theory it's acidic but it won't dissolve in water to make acids you can prove it acidic by making it react with concentrated alkali so not even dilute alkali sio2 will react with conch alkali to make salt and water now this reaction would make sodium silicate sio3 just like a carbonate ion carbonate is co3 to minus this is sio3 to minus literally just like carbonate and ion because they're in the same group so silicon dioxide plus in this case two moles of nh the state symbols being solid and aqueous 
to forming this compound that is aqueous and making also obviously water so an acetic oxide plus alkali makes salt and water now the problem is you need concentrated NaOH because it won't dissolve in dilute NaOH so this is something that you have to remember guys it won't dissolve in water even though it's an acetic oxide because it's insoluble it's a macromolecule but with, the, with conch only only conch NaOH it will form a salt sodium silicate NaSiO3 the anion here is SiO3 2 minus and makes water that's a silicon now then moving on to phosphorus now phosphorus oxide that we'll study is the P4O10 and I'll we'll stick to that only now when P4O10 is mixed in water I told you about the anion the coupled anion is phosphate anion so when it reacts with water make the acid of this anion that's how you remember make the acid of this anion what is the acid of this anion by the way both have a oxidation state of plus 5 here so was the acid of H3PO4 oh, sorry PO4 3 minus it is H3PO4 and just balance it so you got 4 phosphorus here so you need 4 here so what do you do you put 4 there and you got that makes it 12 hydrogens so you want to put what here 6 waters and yes so P4O10 solid plus 6 waters liquid to make aqueous H3PO4 now that's the acetic oxide mixing in water to make an acid and to prove that this is an acetic oxide what do we do we make it react with what alkalis so this guy reacts with alkalis now the most common alkali we take we like taking this guy is which one NaOH so just stick to that because you'll be asked to show a reaction where P4O10 is acting as an acetic oxide well to show that you should show the one it reacting with an alkali so acidic oxide acidic oxide reacting with an alkali to make salt and water so pani to banega banega but salt now what salt do we make here the salt of the acid the same anion same acid same anion ki salt bana denge sodium ki so what do we get na 3 po4 that's the salt that you will make and how many uh, NAs do I need here now? 3. Uh, but you have how many phosphorus here? 4. So how many Na3PO4s would you need? 4 moles of that. So if I put 4 here, then I definitely need 12 NaOHs. And if I have 12 NaOHs, then I make 6 waters. And that's how I'll come up with the equation. I don't have to learn every equation. As long as I learn the anion P4O10 makes, which is the phosphate anion, then the same anion ka acid banata hai in water and the same anions salt is made with NaOH so acidic oxides react with water in this case P4O10 reacts with water to make an acid but to prove as an acidic oxide P4O10 will react with any alkali to make salt and water and you remember that alright because they will ask you for equations to show P4O10 acting as an acidic oxide okay so that's P4O10 now move on to sulfur sulfur has two separate oxides so let's look at them so i'll take both sides of the slide the one is so2 and one is so3 so2 is what how do i get uh, so what does so2 do in water first so so2 in water makes h2so3 now how do i remember that because i told you to again couple this guy with what 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 um the so3 anion and couple so3 with the so4 anion q because in SO2, it's a plus 4 state and SO3 is also a plus, SO3 to minus is the plus 4 state. And sulfur trioxide is a plus 6 state and the sulfate anion may sulfur is also a plus 6 state. Again, I'm giving the oxidation states of the sulfur element here. So sulfur is plus 4 here and in sulfite anion is also plus 4. In sulfur trioxide is plus 6 and a sulfate anion is also plus 6. And this is the equation for sulfur dioxide reacting with water. To make sulfurous acid just keep remembering that the oxidation states in both of these is the same this is not redox reactions plus four state here plus four state here so in sulfur dioxide it's sulfur is plus four in the sulfide anion is plus four and the sulfide anion ka acid is what you make when you add sulfur sulfur dioxide to water now this acid is a weak acid it's not a strong acid 
not as strong as what sulfur dioxide does because sorry sulfur trioxide now sulfur trioxide in water makes the much stronger more popular h2so4 and that we get from the sulfate anion so if you remember sulfur trioxide will always make the sulfate anion then you'll get the acid h2so4 from that and how do i prove these guys acting as uh, what you may call it um acidic oxides well i i react sulfur dioxide gas with NaOH like i said and you'll make salt and water what salt will you make you'll make the salt of the sulfite anion so you'll make na2 so3 so you'll need two NaOHs and you'll make water for that and with sulfur dioxide i'll do it right here sulfur trioxide will react with NaOH because it's an acidic oxide it's going to react with an alkali to make salt and water and what alkali will it will, will salt will it make it'll make the salt of the sulfate anion Na2SO4 equals and there'll be some water left around for this so yeah let me just move that there plus H2O liquid sorry for the cramped of space so for these guys, remember, the, uh, they are both acidic oxides. They both react with water to make acids. H2SO4 is stronger than H2SO3. And they react with alkalis to make salt and water. Alkalis to make salt and water. I forgot to balance it here. Let me put that there, guys. Yeah, thank you. So, now what salt do they make? Well, the anions determine the acid and the salt. For sulfur dioxide, it's a sulfate, an sulfite anion and sodium sulfite in the salt. And sulfur trioxide is the sulfate anion and the sulfur trioxide the sulfate anion in the salt and the acid so that's how i get you guys to remember this stuff again and again and again repetition you have to learn this wrote learn this whatever you need to do you do all right so now the oxides are done the next thing up and the last thing left is period three chlorides and their reactions okay so moving on to period three chlorides what we're going to be doing is the reactions only to understand them we just look at the structures the first two are giant ionic lattices of uh, sodium chloride and magnesium chloride they just dissolve in water they, they generally are both solids at rtp because they're ionic solids obviously the solids are rtp they dissolve in water to form neutral or almost neutral solutions magnesium chloride is considered to be slightly acidic it doesn't dissolve it doesn't uh, make a neutral solution it makes it slightly acidic the why's are not in your syllabus but please remember if they're asking you which chloride forms a neutral solution it's only sodium chloride every other solution becomes acidic as you go across the period so sodium chloride is the only neutral solution the only slightly acidic is mgcl2 ph of about 6.5 and this is because the 2 plus ion actually distorts the water molecule just a little bit and extracts some amount of H plus ions out of water because of its charge density. The other three, aluminum, silicon, and phosphorus, we don't have sulfur here because its, its chloride is not so stable. These three are pretty stable. Their oxidation states go from plus three, plus four, plus five. They're all simple covalent. Al2Cl6 is actually from, it's a dimer of AlCl3. Two AlCl3 molecules use dative bonds to become Al2Cl6. And this guy is also because it forms dimers, they're covalently bonded. They're simple molecular structures. They're simple covalent molecular structures. But they have high melting points, so they're solids and solids and liquid SiCl4. Now, these guys do dissolve, all of these three dissolve in water. They react with water, in fact, not just dissolve. They react with water, and in the reactions, they form HCl gas. All right? the same ionization or distortion that results in magnesium chloride being slightly acidic is also what when dissolved in water al3 plus ions do to water they extract the h plus ions out of water now the equation isn't in your syllabus but it does make an h plus ion and that h plus ions combines with cl to make white fumes of cl what is in your syllabus is the reaction equations of sicl4 and pcl5 when they react with water to make white fumes now when they react with water, for example, SiCl4, being a liquid, reacts with water, also a liquid, 
and uh, sorry and they make um, HCl gas and SiO2 HCl gas which is also aqueous some of it will give a fumes some of it will be, will be aqueous and it makes SiO2 now sometimes you can write SiO2 or you could even write SiOH twice OH four times meaning the second alternate equation could be this also that is SiCl4 liquid plus water molecules liquid make HCl aqueous and SiOH four times now I haven't balanced them yet solid solid I haven't balanced it yet sorry guys you need uh, four waters here for the eight yes and four HCl's here four HCl's here and that would mean you need two waters here so either odd equation works uh, SiCl4 plus water makes four HCl's and either SiO2 or SiOH four times whatever works okay and so this is this is a colorless liquid mixes in water makes white fumes of HCl some of it is aqueous and also makes a white solid and when PCl5 does this with water now PCl5 when it reacts with water it forms what do you call it um, H3PO4 yes that's the same acid we made from for P4O10 liquid H3PO4 aqueous and it also makes HCl gas so I'm just going to actually add HCl gas also here HCl gas and some of it is gas some of it is aqueous so we need five HCl's because we have five Cl's and one phosphorus and I count the H's is eight so I need four waters and that's my balance equation both of these guys made HCl and that's why this, these are acidic uh, compounds acidic chlorides they react with water to give up white fumes of HCl and hence they give up acidic solutions and you should be able to write the, this in the equation in the exam please so let me recap just for this guys okay let me zoom out now yeah so the equations they'll ask for the things what they ask for generally are literally only this for chloride for period 3 which is the only neutral chloride you'll say sodium chloride which is the only slightly acidic chloride magnesium chloride what are acidic chlorides that form HCl gas ALC, 2Cl6 SiCl4 and PCl5 and then they'll say well give an equation for one of them which one forms a white PBT? It's SiCl4. That forms an SiO2 or SiOH12, four times white PBT. But if they ask you to give an equation of a acidic chloride, uh, a chloride that of period 3 that forms an acid, give either of these two. PCl5 making H3PO4 and HCl, or SiCl4 making HCl and SiO2. Or either of the two SI equations or the PCl5 equation. But all, the, all of these three give white fumes of HCl. And the first two, just dissolved, don't react. All right, so that's what you need to know for period three chlorides, and that is all the reactions for period three. This, guys, is over, but please remember you have to learn the reactions. But the questions are so easy, they are literally very, very easy, and they're throwing away marks with these questions. I mean, you wish you got a period three question, you should see some of the questions they give, they are pretty easy as long as you learn about few reactions that are there, starting from um, elements of period three, you got flame colors. You got how they react with oxygen, you got how the uh, oxides react with water, how the chlorides react with water, how the chlorides form, how the oxides form, and that's it. That's just elements, their oxides, their chlorides. Not too much, easy to do. And then I'll see you guys for the next video. Ciao.